Well, congrats again on the fundraise. Give us a sense of how you and the team got started. Like, how did you tune into this this idea? Um, what the opportunity looks like? You know, the skill sets of the team. Um, just take us through that. You know, we built data products for the last two decades, and um, you know, we solved a lot of really really fun challenges for data in motion. But three of us have been very fascinated with this problem of you know, really how do you go extract value out of data? And what I really mean is, you know, can we get more closer to metadata rather than actual data? And so, uh, you know, back when a couple of years ago, we were sort of brainstorming some ideas, um, uh, you know, with that sort of founding spirit that, hey, we're gonna go build something in the space of metadata. We, we had this observation that, you know, if you look at the last 15 years or more than a couple of decades now, a ton of infrastructure has moved to the cloud. You know, you think of apps, you think of network, you know, who thought identity will move to the cloud, but it did. And you know, the last foray, it's only been six years. You know, we're in 2022, but if you look at 2014, you know, modern data systems were just starting to build, you know, Snowflake being 1.0. And, and the observation was, which was number two, that if the data systems move to the cloud at the pace they're moving, you know, it's going to result in absolute sort of redesign of the tooling that was built around data, analytics, protection, you know, security. And sort of, you know, with that observation, what we did is we, you know, as, as you would do uh, as a bunch of engineers and product people, you would go on to talk to customers to validate, you know, what you're thinking and if that resonates. And, and really that's what we did. You know, we said, hey, you know, pick 20 of the most strategic technical leaders uh, when it came to uh, some of the largest customers concerned. And we asked them a very simple question that, hey, if this data moves to the cloud, what's the worry? Or what do you worry about? Or what comes in your path? And the question kept coming about that, hey, we worry about secure data in the cloud. It's very benign if you think of it. You know, what does securing the data in the cloud really means? And, and we took you know, multiple, multiple of those sessions to really go deep down and, and um, you know, get clarity around what does security, secure data in the cloud really means. And so, you know, it turned out, simple set of seven questions. Every CIO, every CISO, repeatedly there was a pattern uh, that, hey, I want to understand where the data is coming from. I want to know where is it. I want to know what the nature of it is. I want to know who's accessing it. I want to know who has access to it. I want to know entitlements and I want to know privilege. And it turned out to be those seven problems, canonical problems of data security. And, and you know, as we dug more deeper, sort of determined um, that, you know, all of those problems have, you know, great products were built over the last two decades to solve those problems. And they've served a great purpose. But if you really look in the world of multi-cloud and cloud dating and hybrid cloud, you know, that entire tool has to be rebuilt and you have to rebuild from scratch. Simply put, the question is who has access to what? And, you know, um, lots of things contributed to that being a very difficult question to answer. Um, not the least of which the enterprise today has islands of identity or islands of authorization, none of which talk to each other. So it really complicates um, how you can answer who has access to what, whether it's for compliance or hygiene uh, right. or a security audit. Um, you just take us through, um, you know, why is it so hard to answer it and, um, you know, kind of what you've built to help answer that question. If you look at that six word question of who has access to what is really spread as metadata across three different classes of systems, not three systems, but classes of systems. And so it really turned out to be three different languages one needs to really understand deeply and canonically and semantically. And unless you do, you you know, there is you cannot answer the question of who has access to what. Okta doesn't speak the language of AWS, and AWS doesn't speak the language of SQL Server. And until you canonicalize and normalize that, you know, one cannot answer that question of who has access to what. Right. So that turned out to be the intuition. The problem a lot more harder than we thought it would be, and partly why we kept the company in two years in stealth because we wanted to build the product and the foundation pretty deep and pretty well. So, 
Yeah, that sounds, I mean, that's, that's a, a lot of work. I think you, you name, you called it um, the authorization metadata graph, um, which, which is pretty unique. Um, it's fancy way of saying, how do I tie all that? How do I normalize and tie all that data together to be able to run such simple but very complex uh, queries uh, in terms of a execution? Um, you know, what, what were the breakthroughs that made it possible? You know, I would start by number one. There are many, many things that happened at the right time. Number one, the world truly, and when I say the world, meaning enterprise organizations truly are adopting data in the cloud. You know, gone are the days when people were like, hey, I want my SQL Server next to my floor, right? So people really are adopting data in the cloud. That was number one. Number two, you know, cloud in many ways opened the world of APIs. I think, uh, you know, now you can go to standard interfaces like in Cloud IAM, and you have a very well defined set of APIs that you can talk to, um, and and get the get the information you need. So you know it's not closed systems of yesteryears, but very much open open systems of APIs and open APIs, right? Uh, so you know whether it be a SharePoint, whether it be a Snowflake, whether it be AWS, you know. I think I think all those systems being born in the cloud and built over the last decades were built API first in mind. Number three, uh, you know, you use the word search, and so, you know, we built a pretty powerful concept called authorization metadata graph. But graph by itself means nothing, you know. So you have to build apps on top of it. The first app we built was search, and you know, if you think about search on a graph. In learning learnings from things like Google and LinkedIn is, you know, those graph technologies, if you want to run a query which says, what does John Doe has access to with a Nike? You need, you cannot run that on classical, you know, columnar databases, right? Those star zone queries are really, really complicated because you're not looking for who has access to what. You're looking for who has access to what and why, at what time, right? So since those queries are a lot more complicated, you had to think about modern database technologies like graph, right, or streaming technologies, which didn't exist 10 years ago. You know, just our last 10 years is where streaming and graph technologies became real. And and I would say number four is is you know identity moving to the cloud. I think that was massive for this industry. You know, Okta, you know, hats off to that team moving identity to the cloud, moving AD to the cloud you know, really opened the horizon of organizations saying, look, I don't need to really have AD in the cloud. I can run AD in the cloud. And, and I think that was another, you know, sort of massive um, uh, force function, if I can use, because organizations believed in authentication in the cloud. So you've been, um, you've been building for quite some time, uh, perfecting the product. And obviously, you know, all this hasn't been, isn't being done in a vacuum. Can you tell us a bit about you know, what kind of companies are using Visa? Um, and, um, you know, we talked about the use cases, but give us a few examples of uh, companies seeing value from Visa. Absolutely. No, I think that's, uh, you know, at the end of the day, that's all <laughs> That's all that matters. You, know, you saw really two customer pain points. So, you know, been very lucky. Another reason why we wanted to keep the company in stealth is, you know, it takes you a good year to build a great, phenomenal, rich enterprise product. MVP. I'm not talking about a year old architecture. It takes a year to solve hard problems. And then you want to take that and put it in the front of first 20, 30, 40, 50 customers because you want to understand repeatable patterns. And so, you know, to name some of the organizations, we've been very lucky and grateful, uh, you know, for them to believe uh, in this team and this product. You know, think of, think of um, you know, customers in sort of two buckets. One is your traditional Fortune 500, Fortune 500, 1000. Uh, you know, think of organizations like AMD and and Wind Resorts and Medtronic, and many many others. You know, world's largest consumer financial, Fortune 500, um, and but also emerging. You know, what we call as commercial mid market organizations like Robinhood and SoFi. So, what do you see the next uh, uh, eighteen to twenty four months looking like uh, for you? What are your hopes for the company? Yeah, no, I think I think that's Kareem, uh, a question that that sort of is really the north star, you know, for 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 any 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 leadership team, any founder. So, thanks for asking. You know, sort of the what the next six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-four months look at. Um, 
you know, I would, I would say, look, when we started the company, um, you know, three of us really started the company that we want to build a, a you know, what we use internally till today, an enduring company, one that goes beyond founder lifetimes. And, and so, you know, that's, that was the true north, that is the true north, that will be the true north. That could we really, you know, could we really go create something that could, you know, uh, uh, that could really create a dent in this industry, right? Where, you know, learning from phenomenal organizations and what, what teams have been able to produce where you can actually create a dent and, and leave a legacy, right? So, so that was really always the goal. But if you want to go do that, you know, it is a fundamental tenet of creating an enduring organization is growth. And and can you create a high pace, fast growth organization where you can, you know, get to that escape velocity, right? Is this is something that I truly deeply believe in. So, uh, you know, that um, said, uh, you know, sort of really, really the things that we think about over the next, you know, 12, 18, 24 months are rooted again on, on power of threes. Number one, a phenomenal team in place, you know, a plus plus star talent across all the functions and departments and, and really want to go hire the next 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 people. Uh, we are 70 today uh, and want to build the team out to about 250 people by the end of next year. Uh, you know, when it comes to growth, you have to think of unnatural things. You have to think of unnatural acts. And, and you know, one of the big unnatural acts we are doing, we are building something called buy model go to market. And buy model go to market means you build an enterprise sales machine, but you also build a free trial led, product qualified led sales funnel. It's very hard to do. But, you know, that's something that we have put that DNA in the second year of this company because we've been practicing that muscle for the last, you know, nine to 12 months. So, so that's number two, really to get that buy model, go to market deem come to reality. <laughs> you know, that will be the next uh, big milestone for this company, because if you can, you know, the growth will come automatically. I, be I believe results don't matter, activity matters. Activity produces results. Uh, number three is, is, you know, as we think of sort of the, um, uh, sort of the milestones for the company and, and really where we're focused on is, is uh, you know, bring this, bring this team together. You know, we've been not, we have not met 70 people, you know, not come together in a single room, in a single conference room, in a single building. And so really, you know, really the next frontier is bring this team back together, um, uh, you know, where people can get the feeling of being with each other and that camaraderie. Uh, that is needed uh, to keep that pain velocity and collaborative spirit. So that'll be the next thing we'll be working on. Um, uh, but, you know, first and foremost is, uh, you know, win the hearts and minds of customers, you know, and that that is all about execution from here on.